Alright, this is going to be a little bit of a trip down memory lane for me here. Um, I have here my 2nd edition Dungeon Master's Guide. And more importantly, I have here my Trapper Keeper from... Tra actual Trapper, Trapper Keeper from the uh, late 80s. And this is where I used to keep all of my notes for both uh, usually running Dungeons & Dragons and occasionally playing. Um, for second edition stuff. Uh, most of my videos so far have been on first edition stuff as I've been kind of having a group that I'm playing first edition with. But, uh, and I did I definitely played some first edition, but most of what I ran was actually for second edition here. And I just wanted to flip through my old binder, which I just came across, which is uh, from the late 80s. Uh, 88, 89, probably maybe 90, but I quit using it, oh, I suppose in the very early 90s. So this would be the kind of the time capsule here of what used to be. So as you can see here, the Trapper Keeper itself is pretty beat up. The little flap is missing. Uh, that uh, fell off a long time ago. Uh, lots and lots of damage here throughout it. The edges, corners, it's definitely been well, well used. Um, and it was at the bottom of a box. It just had gotten shoved there and totally forgotten until just recently. And I thought I would like to flip through it and do a little video. Uh, not 100% sure even what's in here. I did kind of give it a quick little glance, but just to make sure that it's, you know, the, the uh, content that I thought was in here was in here. But uh, I'd love you kind of a surprise as I move through it here. So flipping it open here, I find uh, uh, my own name and phone number from a long time ago. I don't, I don't have no idea who has that phone number, so that would not work to call that number. Over here, looks like I have uh, some English papers. Some old English papers of a short story that I apparently wrote for English class. Um, apparently I was confusing the teacher with some of her comments there. And I also have here um, some of my game work, because I used to have to do this. I used to have to put my homework on top of my D&D um, &D stuff, because otherwise it could be uh, discovered. And uh, it was very, very scary at that time with the whole satanic panic and all that kind of stuff. It would have been better to be caught with, I don't know, a Playboy or something than be caught with D&D &D stuff, because... At least the Playboy would have been considered normal. So this is a good example of that, though. Right here I have homework that's right on top. So that if someone were to flip open my Trapper Keeper, they would see homework and go, okay, whatever. Homework, and then they would just get bored and move on. Well, right underneath that homework, I have here uh, a uh, sci-fi game that I was... Uh, was was doing here and this is kind of one that we made up based on Dungeons and Dragons uh, we didn't have like uh, any traveler type system or whatever anything like that just kind of totally made one up based it on Dungeons and Dragons another short story here some more homework or just some story I wrote for, for myself or whatever but so yep all the Notes for that. Put those back in here. Oh, some of the uh, great tape repair work just came loose, so you can see that uh, Trapper Keeper was definitely well used. Something else I do right up front here then is blank paper. Uh, once again, you could, uh, if the pages were blank, no one was going to like kind of flip through them or anything on you because that'd be kind of boring. But we get down to here. Ah, on old math, my math teacher used to give out these weekly challenges. Obviously this one, because it was graph paper, I uh, used to design a Cal's Mansion, a map for some, I don't even remember this really at all. Uh, very basic, some bedrooms, entry hall. So that's yeah, kind of fun. Uh, more maps. So I, yeah, I think this whole section here is full of maps, just different types of maps that I would have drawn back then, um, high school age. 
Some of these probably even before then. Uh, here's a dungeon of Castle Bliffer. And some caves, apparently. Uh, the Caves of Horus' lowest level. Yeah, we never got to the Caves of Horus' lowest level. He was my uh, big bad guy who was doing all the evil stuff in the world, Horus was. And they kept trying to get to his lowest level of, of his caverns because that's where he was hiding. It was a great plot. Let me just tell you how amazing the plot was because every time they get to a new, a new lower level, he wasn't there. You have to find another lower level. But here, actually, I had actually made a lowest level, but I don't think we ever really got to it. So lots of other stuff going on. Oh, this is for that prison and um, deal that we did. Uh, basically, they took over this tower and then the prison, and it was on an island. Uh, Kate, there was like a dungeon complex underneath of it for some reason. Couldn't tell you why at this stage because it makes no sense. Uh, here's some castle diagrams. Here is a boat. And I think this is the, yeah, Cal's ship. Cal was a. Uh, so kind of kind of a quest giver for uh, for all, a lot of my uh, adventures and stuff. So so I had his mansion back there, and here's his boat. And don't think it flew; it just sailed on the water. And looks like some more blank graph. Here's um a thing interesting. This is one of the first, not the first, but one of the first uh, Dragon magazines I ever owned. As you can see, I three-hole punched it and put it in my binder to, once again, hide it, keep it concealed. I couldn't put it here, because there had to be homework here, and I couldn't have a magazine like that poking out. Um, so yeah, I had to actually hide this right in the middle. So anything like that. Um, not sure why I kept this one specifically. Um, I do have the ones I bought. After this, I actually didn't three-hole punch, but the early ones like this, I did actually three-hole punch. It was a dungeon adventure special inside. This went about 1990, I think, then. And, of course, it's the full magazines here, which I have read cover to cover many, many times. Oh, let's get this here, past here. And then I had uh, characters. Uh, these would have been characters I probably drew up for uh, to use as NPCs or for um, if someone was just going to play the game with us just temporarily. I don't think these guys were used a whole lot. Looks like they got used a little bit. I uh, don't remember them being used a ton. Obviously, they are some of the first levels. Uh, some notes on fighting, how movement and combat works, just some basic reference notes here for myself. Uh, a few more blank. Uh, and then we get some, some character sheets here. Uh, Trug, level 9. He was uh, basically He-Man with his companion, um, who was a red lion. So it was pretty much just He-Man. Uh, a guy named Sil. He was a monk from the Oriental uh, Adventures. And we had, uh, of course, Red Wonder the Red Lion, which was just a lion that was the color red, so nothing too exciting. Oh, and he talked. Um, he talked better than uh, Venger did, or Battle Cat. Uh, let's see, some more characters, some more characters, spell book for one of the characters there. Uh, lots of characters in here, of course, if you're having a D&D, &D, um, you're running D&D &D games, you need to just have a ton of ready-to-go NPCs, so it doesn't really matter what the situation is, all of a sudden you need somebody, here you go, or you just kind of create some some extras just just to kind of have on hand uh, for a variety of things uh, spell books uh, so what I'm obviously one I started and didn't finish um, here's uh, 
this guy was 78 years old. I don't know what he was out there adventuring for, but he was um, apparently lawful evil. So, um, yeah, let's get through all that. Then I have my rogues files, which are more basically character sheets kind of filled out. Um, just a variety of kind of more of the same. Ah, Top Secret. I played that Top Secret game like once. <laughs> Not even sure what those notes exactly meant. Totally cryptic now. Kind of like the D&D notes. You, you take a D&D note and you look at it later like, what does that mean? Yellow feather barrel? Six gold? I don't know what that meant either. Um, so yeah, just more and more characters, more and more characters, um, some backstory type stuff, various creatures I had all penned up ready to just so I could just, you know, run with them and I wouldn't have to look anything up that way. Stuff I still do today, um, just you do it on the computer now. And, uh, yeah, looks like that's, uh, just more of that kind of thing here, and, um, uh, it's like more uh, short story or homework type stuff. Probably more homework type stuff back there because, once again, and some blank pages and quite yellowed. Um, well, here's some more short story type stuff back here. And so, yeah, that's uh, kind of where that was at there. So now this. Once again, for the concealment part, because as you can see here, I actually tried three-hole punching my book, which was really stupid, and I regret doing, but uh, thankfully um, it didn't work, because otherwise that would have been very bad. Um, if I could have cut this off, then I could have three-hole punched the whole thing, but I didn't... I, I stopped, so... Thankfully, I stopped. Uh, there's still this book has been really, very, very well used though. But what I would do is this book here would sit here with some of these papers over the top, and this was the hardest part to conceal. Then when the strap thing would flip around, and the whole thing would be sealed up. And then you put like your math book or something like that on there so that it would be like totally, yep, that's just a homework thing. No one's going to question that uh, what's actually in there. So, well, that's my quick little trip down memory lane. I hope this was kind of interesting for somebody. At least it gives a little bit of a perspective on how we had to kind of sometimes play D&D uh, &D in the Midwest in the uh, late 80s with the whole uh, satanic panic thing going on. Strangely, I never learned how to cast any real magical spells, um, never summoned any real demons. I guess I just didn't get far enough into the book. I, I read the thing cover to cover, but I apparently just couldn't find that proper section. So if you enjoyed this, uh, give it a thumbs up, like, bell icon, the whole bit. Um, thanks, talk to you later.